Good morning. Is it possible for God's messengers to lose their way? Today we're at Jeremiah chapter 26, verses 20 to 24 for our reading. Now there was also a man who prophesied in the name of the Lord, Uriah, the son of Shemaiah of kirjath Jearim, who prophesied against this city and against this land according to all the words of Jeremiah. And when Jehoiakim the king, with all his mighty men and all the princes, heard his words, the king sought to put him to death. But when Uriah heard of it, he was afraid and fled and went to Egypt. Then Jehoiakim the king sent men to Egypt, El Nathan the son of Achbor and other men who went with him to Egypt. And they brought Uriah from Egypt and brought him to Jehoiakim the king, who killed him with the sword and cast his dead body into the graves of the common people. Nevertheless, the hand of Ahikam the son of Shaphan was with Jeremiah so that they should not give him into the hand of the people to put him to death. So here's a story you likely don't recall hearing, but this is another Uriah. You remember Uriah the Hittite, the famous one, the famous warrior of David's that was betrayed? We remember, all remember him, but we don't remember this guy. He was a faithful prophet. He was, it says here, he prophesied in the name of the Lord. It says here that he prophesied the very message of Jeremiah. So they were on the same page. And he was so faithful that the word went out and the king, the king and his leaders were aroused. They were just furious with him. And so the word comes out that they're going to kill Uriah. What does Uriah do? You know, he was doing the right stuff. He was a good guy. But I think he failed of some of his courage because he flees to Egypt. Now, if God sends you somewhere, you better work where you where he sends you. And there wasn't a lot that Uriah could do for, for Israel in Egypt. He was AWOL. He was away without leave. God didn't call him to go to Egypt. God called him to prophesy to Israel. So what he could do for Israel in Egypt was nil. They're going to grab him, bring him back, all the way back, and have him killed right there, perhaps even by the hand of Jehoiakim the king right there himself. Lots of fury and anger here. But here's a man, and then God does not intervene to protect him. So there's a lot about this that we don't really know. We have the story in front of us. What we do know is that, that Jeremiah stood his ground, and God was faithful, and God delivered Jeremiah. But we also know that Uriah did his work, at least in part, but then he fled. You know, sometimes God's servants, we it's okay for us to hide or to flee if God is okay with that, if God directs that. But if God doesn't direct us and we go to, to Egypt or somewhere and we are off the plan, why then God really may not intervene to prevent trouble from coming to us. So we want to be on God's plan all the way. Uriah is a sad tale here. He's kind of like a fake Jeremiah. He was a good man. He delivered a message that nobody wanted to deliver. He delivered it. I mean, he didn't even halfway deliver it. He completely delivered it, paid for it with his life. But it seems like he may have failed of courage, at least for a period of time. One last piece from this. God moves specific individuals to intervene. Ahikam was moved to intervene and save Jeremiah. He was one of the agents God used. Always remember, if you're in a position of authority or influence, God uses specific individuals to deliver. Maybe he'll use you. In any case, let us all be faithful, and now let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you today for the way you worked with Jeremiah. We thank you for what you did with Uriah, at least while he was faithful. We don't really know completely about where his heart was when he fled you, but we know that one lesson to us is to be faithful and to stand our ground for you, no matter what it takes. Lord, we're ready to hide or go away if that's what you tell us to do, but if you don't, Help us to be ready to stand firm, even if we pay for it with our life. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. Thank you for letting us have some little part in your work. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, let's stand our ground unless God shows us a different plan. God be with you today.